Oh, hey. Oh, my God. Really? Let me silence this damn thing. So I'm back with another mask video. Yes. I can barely walk in this mask room. There's been some really crazy mask stuff going on. Um, there's been some really crazy mask related stuff happening. And uh, today <clears throat> I'm going to do a quick video and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my friend again and his collection. And uh, it's, I've been trying to come up with ways to to talk about it and think of ways to do this. But first of all, let me start by saying this this video is going to be about Distortions Unlimited and something totally amazing. At least I think it's amazing and kind of a part of history when it comes to Distortions Unlimited. Like kind of a facet of of history going back to the early 80s and uh, how a mask came to be in the uh, 83 lineup, okay? So first though, I'm gonna sit down and talk about my uh, my friend Frank because there's, uh, there's, uh, God, there's a lot to talk about, but hold on. make a long story short my friend Frank passed away uh, in 2020 and uh, his some people out there know about his collection it was, his collection is called the Franken Shrine Frank's you know Frank had the Franken Shrine and uh, it was oh god here comes one of the cats it's one of the greatest collections that really no one has ever seen you know a handful of people have seen it literal I mean he was so private that it would get get out of here grabbing my camera are you nuts <laughs> so <laughs> yeah you oh, shit so Frank was uh Tim this is a long story I mean I uh I knew of Frank's collection for for a long time didn't know much about it but I knew it existed I became friends with him. If you watch the video on the Vern Langdon zombie mask, you'll I touch on how we became friends. And uh, Frank was in his 70s. Okay, he was born in 1948. Same year as my father. And uh, he literally collected his entire life. Okay. He... He told me he became a monster kid in 1958 at the age of 10 years old in the 1950s. At the age of 10 is when that that really, the whole thing grabbed him. The whole monster thing. The monster movies, the comic books. You know, 10 years old is like kind of like right where you're at when something grabs you as a child and, and you're like locked into this amazing thing and tend to follow it forever you know and uh i remember his brother there's this special little plaque and it says like the frankie shrine founded october 31st 1958 and his brother's like why how come 1958 you know i go that's because frank said that's when he became a monster kid was boom 10 years old get out of here so, um, Frank and I talked for years and years on the phone. Um, and uh, I didn't know, I, I knew he had a great collection. He sold me the rarest mask of all time. What do you want? Hey, all right. You, you can't be here right now. I'm telling a story. I'm telling a story. Yes. All right. 
Stop! All right, I know. He keeps touch. He keeps touching my hand, so I'll pet him. All right, all right, all right. You can't do this just because you see my hand there. You can't. You can't keep touch. No, no, stop. Stop. So Frank and I, um, I said in the other video, like the way we communicated was old school. Okay, we would write letters to each other we would send cards to each other i have all these cards and letters frank would send me over the years there was no you probably hear the cat purring get out of here go on. just get go um it was there was no cell phones there was no answering machines there's no computers there's no email frank didn't even have the internet you know and uh this is it was such a unique friendship that totally brought me back um, in time. And I will never forget it for the rest of my life. You know, get, get out of here. <sighs> so about a year and a half of talking religiously. I mean, like every couple of days we would talk, you know, usually late at night. Be <sighs> Usually we would talk late at night because that's when, uh, you know, there was no other calls to bother either of us. And, uh, I would be home. I would be done. I'd be done working for the day or whatever, or my daughter would be asleep and I'm like, all right, now's the time. Let's talk monsters all night. Okay. Minimum two or three hour phone, phone conversations forever. And, uh, about a year and a half of that one day, he just, quietly sit on the phone he goes um i think i'm ready for you to come out i think i'm ready for you to visit and it got all quiet i'm like are you serious like really you're you're like yeah he goes yes i want you to come see the franken shrine i'm like holy cow this is amazing i go you know and i i go listen i will be there <laughs> I am a world traveler. I've been to like 34 countries. I've been all around this planet. I go, I will come see you. I, I guarantee you I will show up at your doorstep. You know, and uh, to make a long story short, I was getting ready to go out there. And I talked to my buddy who was there in the 80s, a good friend of mine in this hobby, visited Frank in like 1988. And I said, listen, Frank gave me the green light. Like he said, you can come visit the Franken Shrine. And he said, he goes, no, he said, when you leave the Franken Shrine, you will never be the same. I was like, what? Like, this is crazy. And, uh, oh my God. I went out there and, uh, it was just incredible, incredible seeing one man's collection i couldn't believe one man accomplished what he did okay i will talk more and more and more about frank and his collection in time okay this is one video will you stop will you just just go um i was okay so i was shooting a a lot of footage of his collection in detail because I wanted to make a documentary on him. I have all this great footage for about seven years. I was shooting. She's get, I'm shooting. Go for like six or seven years. I would shoot all this footage, which I have. And I've been planning on doing a documentary on, on his collection. I told him, I go, cause there was one thing he never wanted his name on the, on Facebook. He never wanted his, name in forums he's very private you know and for his, the safety of his collection he didn't want people knowing where he lived i mean i respected that so much you know i still do but i said one day frank i'm gonna show the world your collection like the world has got to see the franken shrine in its entirety you know and he he said yes he goes i would love that I go, I'll do it. I'll make it really cool. I'm not a filmmaker. I'm, I'm you know, but I want to make this special video. And it'll be a long one. It might be 
two or three parts. I don't know, but in time, it's not going to be. It's going to be. A, it's going to be a while before I even get to this. But I've got a lot of stuff ready. So, um, you know, like I said in the other video, he was going to uh, finally talk on camera because I'm like, I'm like Frank. We talk so much at night. You gotta talk on camera. Like, let's do the interview because I will tell you, as a collector, the knowledge that is gone. You know, from this one person not no longer being with us, the, the knowledge and the stories, and it's just crazy. It's insane. It's sad. And uh, I, I'm glad I was there to become friends with him. And he was a very quiet person. He didn't. He didn't have a whole bunch of. You know, I have all these people on Instagram I talk to all the time, and i am got lots of friends in this hobby. It was Frank and his masks, okay? And his brother. I mean, his brother and he, you know, they're brothers. They love each other. They're very tight, like I am with my brother. But when it came to other people in this hobby, it was, it was Frank and his monsters, okay? Like I was saying in the, in the last video... I was getting ready to go uh, do this um, this interview with him. I was so excited. And I was in the Cayman Islands um, back in 2020. And, uh, and I'm, uh, I was sitting on my porch. And I saw the phone ring. Okay, my cell phone, my iPhone starts ringing. And Frank's name popped up. And I'm like, oh boy. I said to myself, like, this is going to be a long conversation. You can't just, if Frank called, you couldn't just say, hey, man, let me call you back uh, in a couple days or, you know, next week, you know, or let me call you when I get out of the grocery store. No. You answer that phone, you are locked in to a serious conversation and you are not hanging up. I would say, like, hey, let me, let me call you back. And if he heard me say that, he would just keep talking, like, I didn't hear you say that. Let's talk about monsters. <laughs> so, so I see his name pop up. I'm like, like man, I'm in the, I'm on the island, man. It's gonna be expensive if I sit here and talk with him for an, one hour. It'll be expensive. The phone rang, and I'm like, uh, what do I do? And I missed his call. So then, he leaves a voicemail, and. Uh, I got to call him back. Okay, I got to call him back because I am I was down there for like 10 days or something. This is right before COVID was hitting the U.S. too, you know, around that time. And uh, thank God I call him back. All right. That's all I got to say. I call him back. You're talking about a man who's was in his 70s. I go, what's up, Frank? What's going on? I go, I'm in the Cayman Islands, you know. And he goes, uh, he goes, I wanted to call you and tell you that. Halloween 3 is on right now, and I'm watching it, and I'm thinking about you, and I know you love the, the masks, and, you know, it was so important to him that Halloween 3 was on TV, you know, or whatever channel he had, and he had to tell me, you know, and thank God I, I talked to him that day, and I said, I'm going to come home, and I'm going to plan a trip to, up to see you. And I can't wait to do this interview with you. Then uh, the next day I went to town. I was doing some shopping with some friends of mine that were there with me. And the phone rang again and his name popped up. And uh, I answer. This time it wasn't Frankie. It was his brother. And uh, uh, he called to tell me that Frank suddenly passed away that next day. So, that is how quickly he was gone. <clears throat> no more late night calls anymore, you know, from Frank. And it was like this thing just shut off. You know, this thing in my life, this friendship where we would talk monsters all night, you know. That was, it was gone. Frank was gone. So... <clears throat> In time, you know, his brother and I started talking, and 
the the reason I'm telling you all this about him is because some photos were like leaked of his masks, his mask collection. Some of them were put on the internet and guys started going crazy. Like, oh my God, I would get phone calls out of the blue from people. Like, hey, I know you knew him. Uh, hey, he has this one mask. I want that. <laughs> like, the the man just passed away. My friend's gone. Like, I don't, why are you doing this? Like, I don't, I don't want to talk about masks. Like, get, get out of here. Um, so it was getting very annoying. And uh, what, what a lot of people do not understand is the Frankenstein, Frank would tell me, he would tell his brother, he'd say, this was my life's work, okay? And this wasn't like, a you know, some shelves of masks like this. I will tell you that I've been in, in, I've been into collecting my whole life. I've seen so many crazy things. I've seen amazing collections, but I've never in my life seen anything like what this man did. Okay. And it's books, it's models, it's statues, it's posters. It's, I can't, I can't even explain how incredible it is that one person did what he did. Okay. To put it lightly. And, uh, he would say, this was my life's work. This is my life's work, this collection. And he's, he would always tell me, I want my collection to live on somehow. I, I don't want my collection split up all over the country. You know, I don't want masks just scattered all over. I want this to live on. The, the Frankenstein is my life's work. And that's what a lot of people need to understand all right um it's it's a very complicated thing it's a very sentimental thing okay i know some of you have seen pictures and whatnot but it's not like everything is just up for grabs um like just please settle down <laughs> those of you in the hobby that know me that have contacted me about his stuff and uh like just stop all right because i'm gonna stop responding okay um who knows someday what will happen but i am doing everything in my power to make a big portion of his collection live on i've been thinking in so many ways how like how to how to keep this collection going in my own way. Um, I'm starting to merge his collection with mine in time. That's you know slowly in time. We're doing things to merge his collection with mine, as far as masks, you know, and I want to do something here dedicated to his collection i want to help make his dream of his collection live on possible um you know it's become very uh, sensitive and very sentimental to his brother his brother and i are great friends and uh we agreed you know like frank frank wants this to live on so how are we going to do this I'm doing what I can when I'm allowed to, when I'm granted, you know, the possible, when I'm, when I'm given the go to actually get things from his collection, I am. If, believe me, if I got the call tomorrow this, and said, come, come buy everything, bring tons of money, you know, there was all, man, just me becoming friends with this man cause controversy it, it was crazy there were so many weird jealous people in this hobby that just lost it that i became friends with this gentleman so bad that i actually had to threaten to sue someone okay that were saying horrible things about me um and i said i'm not even gonna repeat what this moron said out there 
I literally had to send an email saying one more word out of you with my name in a sentence and I will see you in a courtroom. Like, freaking out that I'm friends with someone that has great masks. Like, oh, I should be friends with them. And they're trying to sabotage my friendship with the man. Like, it, it fucking insane, all right? Um, back to my story. So, uh, where the hell was I? I'm like brain fried. I teach his brother everything I possibly can on what Frank said about things. I want him to know. Like, he's, he's so into what his brother did because it's mind-blowing what this man did. And I do promise you I will bring you this collection one day. And you will see it all intact. So anyway, I just spent time out there and I brought back some absolutely incredible things. And there's going to be really, really, really cool stuff coming in videos to come. Um, so this first mask I'm going to show you guys from the Frankenshrine was made by Fantasy Faces Studio in Hollywood back in 1981, all right? This totally has to do with Distortions Unlimited. And I'm gonna show you other Distortions pieces in this video, so don't hang up just yet. You're gonna see some cool stuff, uh, special stuff. And uh, so this mask, in 1981, a guy by the name of Mike Levele and a gentleman by the name of Rick Stratton created this mask off of an armature that was casted directly off of Dante Renta's head. Those of you that know Dante, this is cool. So, we're talking about the mask Heavy Metal, all right? The 1983 Distortions Heavy Metal. However, it was originally born as a completely different piece by Fantasy Faces Studio in Hollywood, like I was saying. They made this massive badass mask okay finished by rick stratton and uh only a handful of these were produced okay sitting right here next to me is the number one pull out of the master mold it's so cool and i've got the distortions version of it sitting right next to it i'm gonna shut up i'm gonna pan over and look at that oh my god so this crazy thing on the left you see that on the right you have the distortions unlimited heavy metal look how big that thing is on the left okay that my friends is the infamous prototype um the number one master mold pole right there so basically they made a they made an armature of Dante Renta. They life casted his head. Then Mike Lavalle, I hope I'm not massacring his name, all right? He roughed in the sculpture for this thing, which Rick Stratton, those of you that don't know who Rick Stratton is, go look up his IMDb. I'm talking about the Rick Stratton, okay? Makeup and special effects extraordinaire um, who's worked on major Hollywood productions, okay? Rick Stratton finished the sculpture, all right? After they completed it, only a small number of these masks from the master were available locally by Rick, okay? Like a handful, I don't know, five maybe, um, were produced. This is number one out of the master, okay? And, uh, you stupid cats. <laughs> um... Rick Stratton painted this himself. That's a Rick Stratton paint job there, folks. So this amazing piece was made in 1981, all right? And uh, the guys at Fantasy Faces Studio in Hollywood produced it. You know, Mike Lavelle, 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 and Rick Stratton. And... Uh, so, when they sold this new in, in 1981 as a small run, you know, five, five or six pieces, they were 125 bucks each, all right? And then, a guy by the name of Ed Edmonds, all right, those of you that know Ed Edmonds, Distortions Unlimited, created one 
for their 83 lineup, I think it was 82, 83, maybe 82, but 83 for sure. They, they came out with heavy metal and, uh, they produced them at a much cheaper price of 59.95. Okay. So the one Rick painted, um, was enormous airbrush, beautifully glazed teeth and gums. I mean, just a killer, you know, this is definitely aged in time, this piece. But man, the paint job is so wicked. Look at that thing. So cool. And uh, the, the, the distortions copy really, you know, is super close in all every detail. Um, you could tell that the Rick Stratton piece is much larger. Definitely better paint. You know, these were production masks. Of course, this has better paint. It was a very small handful of custom pieces by a master painter makeup and painter at the time rick stratton but man this sucker is no doubt rare but to me no doubt a really cool piece of distortions unlimited history because that was the direct inspiration obviously for heavy metal which is one of the coolest 80s distortion pieces of all time and you could see that they totally, you know, copied it to a T as closely as possible. This is a little taller. You know, this is a massive piece. But uh, I'll try to get them looking at each other here. Like, look at that. Isn't that insane? Those of you that know this mask, it's huge. But look at that. Just so cool. So that is the story. Um, you know, the Distortions paint scheme followed Stratton's pretty damn close um and it's just incredible that this is sitting here next to my copy of heavy metal <sighs> that is so neat this was actually featured in the distortions book by lee lambert i photographed it years ago and there's a little photo of it in the book but this is the actual piece the number one copy the first pull out of the master is this one right here and those of you that didn't hear anything I said, because you're awe inspired by this. So in 1981, Fantasy Faces Studio in Hollywood created this number one pull. They, they, they did an armature off of a life cast of Dante Renta himself, my buddy Dante. Um, Mike Levely roughed it in, Stratton finished the sculpture. They made the mold. They pull the master pull out of that first, that first pull is this sucker, nice and thick, okay? And uh, Rick Stratton painted it beautifully, and that was in 1981. There's photos of this thing out there. It, it, I think it popped up in Fangoria Magazine, some vintage photos. Um, I'm going to see if I could dig up some old pictures while I'm doing this video to show you this thing sitting on some shelves, or maybe one of the few copies that were made at least of this thing and uh man then ed edmonds came along and said man i want to make that into one of my masks for my line for 83 probably in 82 and uh boom heavy metal was born right there isn't that crazy so that is just one amazing piece to come out of the frankenstein and uh it's to me it's incredible that it's here right now so i'm gonna have this professionally foam filled by a friend of mine and uh make sure it's preserved for many years to come but i i could not wait to show you guys this as the first official video where i'm merging pieces of the frankenstein with the crimson ghost mask room look at that sucker if you like that you're gonna love what i'm about to show you next so when I originally went to Frank's collection, I remember the first the first time he let me go around in all these, you know, little coves and whatnot in part of the collection, and I'm exploring and looking around. I came across these ma these masks that were all under plastic bags, and I'm like, oh my god, you've got them! They're distortions masks that I would. I wanted so bad as a kid, you know, they're gory as hell. 
I remember they were so different than Don Post masks because they were so bloody. However, they weren't bloody enough for a young man that was looking at them at the time at the age of 15. I'm going to explain to you all about that. Let me get them out and show you these three amazing Distortions masks because Frank knew I loved them. I said, someday you got to sell me these masks. I got to show the world these beautiful distortion pieces and he would say don't worry someday you you will someday you will and I would, i'd always say i don't want to wait till someday <laughs> like well, i don't want to wait till then all right guys look at these beauties these are some of my favorite distortions masks of all time all right these gory bastards from the from the 80s these are classics you've got grizzle Hack and Bashed, okay? Three infamous Distortions Unlimited masks. These are all originals. You Distortions guys wondering why they look a little different though, I'm gonna explain to you why. At the age of 15, a young man by the name of Jordu Shell saw these masks in my friend's possession, okay? And Young Jordu told my buddy, he goes, they're cool and all that, but they don't have enough blood. I'm going to take these home, <laughs> make them way bloodier, and send them back to you. So a young Jordu shell took these suckers home in the 80s, added blood, customized them, and sent them back to Frank, to the Frankenshrine, where they stayed for decades and look at that. Look how I, man, they were so gory to begin with, you know, when they were a production mask that I just want, I wanted them so bad. And when I seen his copies, I go, what's going on here? They're super bloody. And he told me the whole story about how a young Jordu shell took these home and customized them for him, which makes these special. I mean, in my, in my mind, these are really cool that that in that, point in time these masks were taken home by by a young Jordi shell who who is now you know one of the greatest guys in the whole sculpting world Jordi shell is a master so i just could not wait to show you guys these special copies not to mention that they're just pristine they're beautiful all of the hair work is gorgeous on them like they were i'm telling you these sat under plastic bags since the 80s and they are absolutely perfect condition i mean look at this i'm gonna keep turning it around and show you this mask is so beautiful a little dusty i have to I have to detail him a little bit but man look how nice they are frank took such special care of his masks. Um, that's one thing. Frank not only had the greatest masks as far as quality, he had specialty pieces, prototypes. Everyone loved Frank. They would send him catalog copies and specially painted pieces. He liked his masks customized. Back in the day, in the 80s, that was the thing. You would get masks and have them customized. So, you know, these days, guys like me want old masks with their original finishes. But you're going to find that the old timers in the hobby loved customization of their pieces. It was a, a big thing. And a lot of them, to this day, want that over production paint jobs. They want those customized pieces. So this, I could not wait to show you these to end this video on the distortions pieces that were part of the Franken shrine and uh there's a lot more to come i have brought back incredible things and in time i'm going to unveil them for you guys in these videos and uh i keep thinking on different ways on how i'm going to honor the Franken shrine i may do a i may build an entire wall just to house his masks and uh, keep them all together. And I'm definitely going.
going to do dedication videos to the masks that come out of his collection a little at a time all right so i hope you guys enjoyed this and i hope in time you will respect the privacy of certain people we're doing everything in our power to keep his collection alive and uh it's going to be one heck of a it's going to take a lot of work that's all i can say so i'm glad you got to see this i've been waiting to show you the, these masks and uh i especially i'm especially excited to show you that that heavy metal piece that thing is just bad to the bone you know that's from the old days the old days of 1981 Psh, god i was nine years old when they made that damn thing guys in hollywood making badass masks while i'm playing with micronauts <laughs> and star wars toys all right glad you got to see this video i got cut off down there i was trying to say thank you for watching please like the videos it helps me please subscribe please share these with your your friends and your family and your co-workers <laughs> and your boss whoever whoever you think would like these weird mask videos i do um and we will be doing a lot more masks. You will not believe some of the pieces I, I brought back with me. And I cannot wait to share them with you and carry on the legacy of Frank's collection because it's, a, it's one of the most special things I've ever seen in my life. Thank you for watching and just wait till next time. There's more coming. So I'll see you guys later. Good night. And tonight's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm so full. I'm going to go to bed now. Later.